Hi everyone, this is Mindy Egan and welcome back to the My Favorite Things YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be creating an edge to edge shaker card. I was very inspired by some crafty friends that have been doing this and I decided to jump on the bandwagon and give it a try. Not only are these a ton of fun to make, but there's not a lot of bulk to them and it is a great way to start using up some of those embellishments and sequence mixes that we've all been collecting. I'm going to start off my card by first ink blending my panel. So I have a piece of Nina Solar White cardstock, this is 80 pound, that I'm starting with Twisted Citron. And I'm using a dome blending foam tool to do my ink blending. Starting on one side, I'm going to ink blend that Twisted Citron up to about the halfway point, getting lighter with my ink as I get towards the middle. Then I'm going to come in with mowed lawn and I only want this about part way in. I want to have kind of a gradation of color between that light and dark. I want it to get dark on one end and then fade off into white as it gets towards the middle. So with the mowed lawn just coming in really light handed going in circular motions. And if I need to, I can bring in my other blending tool to kind of help smooth that transition a little bit. Now I don't want to contaminate my colors so I do clean off my work surface in between and now I flip the cardstock and I'm starting with spun sugar. So this is just a really really light pink once again starting on that end and working my way towards the middle just getting lighter handed as I get towards the middle. I know that the pink and green would not make a very good blend so I want to leave kind of a little strip of white towards the center. Then I'm going to come in with worn lipstick starting on that end and as you layer this color up it's a lot easier to blend oxides are really good for blending to begin with but when your ink is wet like this or the more ink you add to the cardstock it really does get a lot easier to blend now the warm lipstick was a little bit too pinky for me so i'm coming in with festive berries to really kind of give that that christmas vibe once again just kind of blending off into the warm lipstick bringing in my other blending tools and just using the leftover ink that is on them to help smooth that transition out. And if there are any imperfections on the background, they're going to get hidden up with all our fun embellishments anyway. I'm going to also add some starry color speckles to this. So this is just my starry colors uh, palette that I'm adding drops of water to the white and the gold. And I'm going to flick these onto my background. I like to just add a couple drops of water, mix it up, and then put a little bit onto an acrylic block and flick that onto the background with a paintbrush. Now, honestly, this step really wasn't needed because my embellishments or my sequence and glitter kind of cover up the speckles. So if you didn't want to do a shaker card, this would be a great way to do a background. So after I added the gold and the white, I'm going to set it off on the side to dry for a few minutes, or you can help it along with your heat tool. Then I'm going to flip it over and I did trim this down to about four by five and a quarter and I am going to line the entire edge of the back of this with some red line tape. You can use some double sided tape, any type of double sided tape that is super sticky. Now I am just working on a scratch piece of paper here so it's easier to see my shaker card when I bring that in and also just protecting my work surface a little bit so I don't get those watercolors on it in case my background isn't dry because I do tend to be a little bit impatient when it comes to dry time. But I do want to make sure I have this red line tape or your double sided tape all the way around the edge of your card. Now I've seen these edge to edge shaker cards done in a few different ways and one of the popular ways is using the packaging from your stamps. So since my card is four by five and a quarter, I am using the packaging from one of the larger MFT stamp sets. And I'm just taking this packaging to my paper trimmer and trimming off all of those edges. I really could have done this with a pair of scissors, but I wanted my edges to be straight, just kind of how I am. So I'm using my paper trimmer cutting off all of those seams. So I'm going to have two separate pieces of this clear protector. And now I have my card here that's trimmed down. Now I am leaving about a half an inch on each side. I didn't quite measure it. I just eyeballed it, but I'm going to send her center my panel on that protector sheet. Then I'm going to just remove the backing on my red line tape 
and fold all of those edges over. Now you will notice in the corners that you have kind of a little bump there of the excess built up from that packaging. And I just trim it off with a pair of scissors. You just want to make sure you're not actually cutting the edge. Otherwise, all of your goodies in your shaker are going to fall out. So just trimming off that little bit of excess. Now, key point, leave one end open. I didn't remove my backing yet. I just kind of left that so I wasn't fighting with the stickiness. And then I went through my stash and I just gathered up some, you know, sequins or glitter that I have in my stash and just dropping these into that open end. Little bit of each. These are some iridescent sequins. I have some gold that I thought would look really pretty. And then I also have some chunky glitter. So if you have glitter stashed somewhere or you collect sequins and hoard it like I do, this is a great way to start using it up. Now with the glitter, I did just kind of spoon a little bit in there. And this is where it dawned on me. I guess I didn't need to flick any watercolors on the background because the glitter kind of covered it up. Then I can remove the backing of that last piece and fold that over. And here we have this really cool edge to edge shaker card. Now you're not going to get as much movement as if you made a regular shaker, but being that it covers the entire background, I just absolutely love these. It's kind of my new obsession is making these edge to edge shaker cards. Now you could go ahead and add this right to a card base right away. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do yet. So as a, I, I call it a security blanket, I have a piece of cardstock cut to the same size as my panel here and I'm just adhering that. So that's my security blanket. It's covering all of those edges in the back and just makes it really nice and flat. So now I'm going to take foam tape and just align the back of this panel with the foam tape to add a little bit of dimension to the card. And I will be adding this to a card front that is going to be four and a quarter by five and a half. And then how fun is this? It's so sparkly and pretty and it just makes an amazing background. So to keep this pretty simple, I'm just going to add a sentiment to the front. I have the Merry Christmas here die cut from some gold mirror cardstock and then the shadow layer I cut three times from white cardstock and layered that together with my liquid glue. And then I'm adding this to the front of the card kind of at an angle. Now I did kind of shake everything to the bottom to make sure that that middle area was a little flat. If you want to make sure you're securing this really good, you could put something heavy on top. But I just kind of held my hand on it for a few seconds and it's holding up really well. I decided to add a little sentiment underneath the Merry Christmas. So I have the itty bitty holiday sentiment and I'm going to stamp this onto some black cardstock. So I prepped that with an anti-static powder tool. I'm inking up my sentiment with the mini Versamark ink pad, which is just perfect for these small stamp sets. And then I'm going to sprinkle on white embossing powder. I thought of using gold because I thought it would match the background, but I also thought it might get a little lost. And I wanted this to stand out really well against all of that gold and glitter. So after I heat set this and I trimmed it down into a thin strip, I lined the back of it with some black foam squares. And I'm going to add that right under my Merry Christmas sentiment. And then that will finish off my card today for this. So these are just really fun to make. You could also do some background stamping and create a background with this. There's just so many great possibilities and kind of my new way to make a shaker card. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you again real soon.